Alright guys, today we're going to be looking at sequences, okay? Specifically arithmetic sequences. And so what I'd like to do is introduce you to these sequences, but also compare it and relate it to the linear graphs and the, the direct variation and the other things that we've been doing for the last few days. Alright? So we're going to start with the sequence here, 3, 6, 9, 12. And can you predict the next three numbers? Hopefully you were able to figure that out. Hopefully you recognize that if you add 3 here, 3 plus 3 would be 6, 6 plus 3 is 9, 9 plus 3 is 12, and so if we continue that pattern, we'll get 15, and then 18, and then 21. Okay? Now, this leads us into something called an arithmetic sequence. An arithmetic sequence is a sequence or a series in which we add or subtract, since subtracting is just adding a negative, the same number every time. Okay, now this 3 that I'm adding every time has a special name. It's called the constant difference. Okay, so that's important because we'll be using that word later. Okay, but the constant difference, again, is that number that you're adding or subtracting every time as you go from one term to the next. Okay? Now, if a sequence has a constant difference from one term to the next, and it's always the same, that's what constant means, then we have what's called an arithmetic arithmetic sequence. Okay? Now, what I want to do next is take this new idea and apply it to what we've been doing before. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a table. Okay? Now this table is going to have x values and y values. And I'm not going to list them all because we only need a few of them. But the x value is going to be the number of the term. Okay? Now what do I mean by that? I mean, well, the first term, which is in 3, the second term, the third term, the fourth term, and that's probably good enough. Okay, now if we do y, so y is going to be the value of the term. Okay, so if I have x1, so the first term, the value is 3. The second term, the value is 6. The third term, 9. The fourth term, 12. So, with that, I'm now going to plot that on my graph. And I know that all these points are going to fit, but I'll be able to get a couple of them on there. So I'm going to go to 1, comma, 3. Okay? And I'm going to go to 2, comma, 6, which will be just barely off my graph there, and that's all right. Okay? So now I've got those points. So let's look at a couple of things. All right? First, if I keep going with my points, you would notice that I would end up with a straight line. Okay? So if I draw that straight line in using a ruler, then hopefully I would recognize that it looks like it's passing through 0, 0. If it does pass through the 0, 0, that means that it is a linear graph with the 0, 0 intercept, which means that it is direct variation. Now, how can we check to make sure it is absolutely certain that it's direct variation? Well, there's a couple of ways. One is we can check the slope. Okay, what is the slope of this equation? Well, we can do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, so I can do 6 minus 3, and you can choose any points for this. I'm just choosing the first two, 6 minus 3 and 2 minus 1, which gives me a slope of 6 minus 3 is 3, divided by 2 minus 1 is You'll notice that the slope is the constant difference. Oh my gosh, the slope is a lot of things, isn't it? With direct variation, it was the constant of variation. Now we find out it's the same thing as the constant difference. And you'll notice that if I use that slope, then I go up 3 over 1. I can also go down 3, 1, 2, 3, and over 1, giving me 0, 0, which checks that this is direct variation. 